Okay, so here he is. Come on, Richard, explain explain this issue that we're seeing a lot. We're seeing a lot of. So basically, people are booking in for manifolds, which is obviously fine. Thank you very Saying much. Available on the website. Are either got a custom exhaust on it, or they've got an exhaust on it, or sometimes they've got the standard exhaust on it. The, the, so I like the problem that we're seeing. This vehicle's got a sort of custom back box section on it. So obviously, someone's done it cheap and just had the back box. What they've done is just cut a silencer out of the centre section. Uh, so it's a standard midsection, and then just cut a silencer out of it. The issue here lies is the flange that bolts to the cap. And this is where we keep continually having problems. Obviously, this is eroded away to next to nothing. Someone's put nuts and bolts through, and obviously done. But if you look on this side, and I'll try and get a torch so you can see, there's actually nothing left of the actual flange itself. It is completely gone. Um, so the problem lies, obviously, if we've got to put a manifold on this car, what are we reattaching it with? Because when I take that apart, you can see it's all crumbling. It's just going to completely fall apart, which means we won't be able to put a bolt back in it. Um, that is a common problem that we're obviously seeing. And we seem to be getting it a lot where they're coming in just for manifolds. Um, and, and then obviously they, they either know this is like this or they, you know, or they don't know it's like that. Like in the instance of this customer. Uh, he thinks he's got a custom exhaust on it. Well, it's a it's a standard system. Custom bodged. is a way of describing it. Yeah, that's right. It's a it's a bodged up section to try and make it. The problem is what makes it difficult for us now is we don't have an exhaust system in stock for this car because today we, because we ordered for each yeah. car. So now this almost stops us from being able to do this job because we can't fit the well we can fit the manifold. And we are going to the customer's going to have to find an exhaust or whatever afterwards. So we can carry on. But ideally, we would obviously put a new exhaust in this car at the same time and deal with the problem. Um, so I think what we're going to do from now on, or what we've talked about is, if someone books in for just manifold, then they're going to have to send us a picture of this flange so Agreed. that we can, uh, we can advise best before the car gets here. Because like in this gentleman's instance, he stopped at a hotel overnight and the car's here just for today. Yeah. So it, I, it's having to now try and deal with that problem. Fitting an exhaust wouldn't have been a problem had we have got one. Sure. And he had the budget for it as well. We have to remember that. Yeah. That's this is why it has to be planned, doesn't it? Yeah, it's why it has to be planned, yeah. Uh, yeah, because this, this isn't looking particularly good anyway, is it? No, no. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's typically what you see when you hear the word custom, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for that, Richard. Welcome back to another Dino Days video. And in the house today is a black FN2 Civic on some interesting alloys, as you can see. It's got some mods. It's got a CPL Big Bore Induction Kit, wrapped in gold, very, very nice. And also a Jap Speed 4 to 1 manifold. Now it has got a bit of a custom exhaust. And we use the, custom, the word custom very lightly. It's a bit of a mackle standard system. But we'll see what power she puts out. First thing we're gonna do is do a stock power run. And then at that point, on the stock ECU, we're going to flash the Ecotech software. That'll allow us to data log and start tuning. So let's do it. Quick update. This isn't the CPL big ball. It is a CPL kit, but it's not the big ball one, the same as what I have on my car or had on my car. So this is a different kit. So this is the non big ball version.
I've had two Civic. <clears throat> Someone's got a frog in his throat. <clears> throat. I have. Yeah. There's a, there's a few bits of material flying out of the back box on this custom exhaust. I think Dan's inhaled a few of them. Oh. I think that's what's uh, that's what's going on there. It's all good for him though. It's character building. <coughs> puts hairs on my chest. Yeah, puts hairs on his chest, yeah. Not that he needs any more. You, you like my rug, don't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you do mention it. I have mentioned it, yeah. yeah. Well, so FN2, it uh, came in this morning for 4 to 1 decap manifold. Uh, we did a little video this morning, which you've already seen, um, where the mating flange for the exhaust, obviously to what was the original cap, was completely eroded. Um, it has bolted back up in the sense, but obviously it's not perfect. Um, we advised the customer straight away, like, look, we're not going to be able to seal this. It's going to want an exhaust on it um, and to, fi you know, to fix it properly. But for now, it can be bolted back together and it'll do a job. Uh, so we've done that. That's exactly what we've we've done with it. Uh, we've stuck it on the dyno today. We did an initial power run. Uh, I think, what was it? Initial power, about 2.15? Yeah, we've not made much peak here because no. obviously the exhaust could be better. The induction kit, which I thought after speaking to the customer was a CPL big bore induction kit. <clears throat> it is not a CPL big bore induction kit. No, it kit. definitely isn't. because It's the... just a stock. A standard CPL induction yeah, kit. Yeah, it's a standard CPL <clears throat> induction kit because the big boy induction kit comes in two parts, don't mm. it? Yeah, well, it's, it's fatter. Yeah, one, it is obviously diameter is bigger, and two, it comes in two parts. This is a singly piece going down mm. into the inner wheel arch. So, like I say, we think it's just a CPL induction kit. So, not necessarily a big boy. Uh, we did have a little bit of hesitance slash, I'd almost say, a very, very slight misfire. When we first started the car, <clears throat> we heard it. Uh, after it had gone cold and when we run it on the dyno and just holding constant revs you could just feel it dropping off a little bit so i spoke to, I spoke <coughs> no, to the customer yeah <clears throat> it's in the air yeah so i spoke to the customer when was the last time you had spark plugs in this car a couple of years ago he says i say okay well you know this is general maintenance it's better for us to fit a set of spark plugs now and try and rule out that problem yeah, so fit the plugs. Uh, that seemed to alleviate the problem. So uh, hopefully that that was what was going on there. Uh, we've done a couple of power runs since and not had any problems. And we've done some cruising and stuff. We've not had a problem. So I think that that nipped that and sorted that problem out. Um, oh, you're yawning. You're yawning now, yeah. Nice. I've not had a lot of sleep since last week. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. So then obviously, I mean, effectively. You have to understand this has got a standard exhaust on it. In, in my opinion, it probably is worse than the standard exhaust um, with that bat box set up. It's definitely coughing its uh, insides out, so that probably is a little bit blocked and probably not the best as well. Uh, so I think, yeah, definitely moving forward uh, for this customer, 100% uh, is an exhaust system, and I think we'll uh, unlock a few more ponies yeah. and it'll certainly be better. Turkey with 70 mil would be great when they're back in stock, which should be, you know, soonish. Yeah, uh, we made like 25 brake in the mid range, and it's a non GT model. Yeah, so, so we put all the features on to map one. So all the features that will work are now in map one. So, yeah, well, it's a weird thing. I think uh, to touch on exhaust, I think we've really struggled with exhaust, certainly last year and then into this year, where people aren't there isn't the stock anymore like people don't have them i mean tegua do buy them in and they're buying them in in bulk but they're taking so long to get here that they're obviously like ordering a load in they turn up and they're re-ordering or probably even reordered before <clears> the yeah. first lot get here last last time they came in i ordered like five or six and i had them in stock and they went out the window and as soon as i realized that i'd sold out my stock tegua had sold out their stock so this time around mm. i'm gonna have to make sure i've got like 10 Make some space upstairs. Yeah, make some space and put them up there. But the, the, the problem is, I think the problem is that the Chinese can't make them fast enough. Yeah, those 10 year old Taiwanese girls are. Yeah, they can't make them fast enough. Then the time that it's taking to get here now and all the and the problems that are going with the cost of shipping and everything else, we just can't get enough in or you can't get enough of them in. Mm. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, exhaust systems are a bit of a, a moot point, really. I mean, the Tegua 70 mil, like we've said before, is ultimately the best value for money. You can obviously buy M2s, you can buy other makes. Um, but, but I, like just, the Tegu I just don't I don't think they're worth it. When you look at the money that they are for sale for, and then you look at the Tegua 70 mil, it's bang on the competitive price mark, ain't yeah, it? Yeah, M2, uh, M2's more expensive for two and a half inch. Yeah, which is not as good. The Martellius isn't as good as the Tegua 70 mil. Nowhere cost. near. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. Well, there's half the amount of material there to start with. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then if you go like, and if you step up, 
and goes to three inch, they're double the price. Yeah, it's like nine, like a grand, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, nearly a grand for the for the box. Well, it is. So the time you fitted it, and if someone says, "Oh, I want a different," like we did with Matt, is a different back box on a different tip, and we did the same with. Um, that's our, he wanted his tailpipe just slightly, slightly modifying. You know, by the time you've done a little bit of work on it, they're well over a thousand pounds, didn't they? By the time you've done it, fitted it, and, sure. and, and modified slightly. It makes the Tegua system such a good value, so, such good value for money. Mm. And it's a good bit, it's a good bit of kit. We've got some sales, that we've got some orders on back order now, even after I've said to the customer, look, I don't know when they're landing. Mm. But you got to be in it to win it. You need to be. Your order needs to be in to ensure. Yeah, they're, get... they're either in the queue, aren't they, or they're not in the queue. It's that simple. And I make so. no apologies for the fact that I have no way of controlling anybody else's stock that we're the, the, using. The, the problem is, though, you could go down the route of, um, for example, having something custom made in this country, so you could always have stock. But the people that do that work are more expensive than that. Take you a seventy mil. You can't. You just can't get. An exhaust for that for of that quality for that level of because you've got the likes of Luke at LA Fab. Yeah, he makes a great bit of kit. Well, yeah, they make solid they're, fab, they're, make a great solid bit of fab. Kit. You got Giz Fab. Their their like work is <coughs> is second to none, it, absolutely, and the best quality work that you're ever going to get. But the problem is though, they are at that thousand pound mark because it's all they're all individually made and, and, and you still the and you're still waiting. Weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah, because they're not sitting there mm. waiting to make a batch of exhaust. When they're people find stuff. out they need a new exhaust, they need a new exhaust. Yeah, like now. Now. So like that. we would have today, if we'd have had it in stock, we probably could have sold an exhaust day and fixed it. But we but ain't got no stock. We ain't got no stock. Mm. So, because no one's got any. Mm. But there you go, that's... Uh... That's life, isn't it? That's a rant about exhaust for us for today. Look, mate, I'm ranting about everything this week. If there's nothing escaping me that's not getting a rant, that's how I'm feeling. Mm. Shall we have a look at this graph then? Yeah, come on. Come on then. Let's go look at the graph, eh? I'll turn it off for you. Go on then, do you touch it? Well, as we always say, red line is as she came in, blue line is as she leaves, and we've got ourselves some power in the mid range there. A tiny, tiny bit of peak power. If you look at the wheel horsepower line, you can see we're up pretty much across the graph. And we finish today on 217 brake horsepower, which is 181 at the wheels. Code word for this vehicle is Tegua 70 mil, because that's what it needs. It needs a Tegua 70 mil. We get this up on power. It will be a beautiful stainless system that you can fit and forget. It will be there much longer than the car. I think that's the best option. So Tegua 70 mil is a code word. If you bothered to get this far in the video, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And we'll see you all on the next one, won't we, Jeddo? Won't we, Rich? Yep. See you all in a bit. Boy, I'll say it again. Lane was pretty fast.